All right. Well, we might have a couple others uh, jump on here in the next minute or two if they're just running late. Uh, but first of all, let me let me thank you all for participating in this conversation tonight. Um, we have 90 minutes scheduled, and I can guarantee you we will not go beyond 90 minutes. If anything, we will uh, uh, try to end a little bit early if we can. Ah, there's Mr. Veal. How you doing, Sam? Still connecting to audio. Um, what I'd like to do first is maybe go around the, the, the horn with everybody and introduce themselves so that we can all know who is on uh, tonight's conversation. Um, I'll go first. I'm Mike Stephopoulos. I'm the city manager for the city of Jacksonville Beach. Uh, I've been with the city now for about a year and a half. <clears throat> One of the things that uh, we're trying to do with the organization is uh, to get to a point of having our first strategic plan. And in order to develop a strategic plan, the first thing we need to do is have a vision for the community of what people think that vision of tomorrow should look like. And so we're trying to gather input from uh, residents and the business community to get a really good idea of what you all see the future of Jacksonville Beach as. Um, this is a little different than the exercises that were done up in Neptune Beach and maybe some other nearby communities where you pile 100 people into a conference room and you have maps on the wall, you're all given stickers and you're voting throughout the night. This is really more of a, uh, a conversation-based uh, discussion where we, we talk about specific topics, and in particular, there are four questions that we're going to be going over tonight. And this is really an opportunity for us to hear what you, the, uh, the business community, have to say about where you think Jack's Beach should be going from a directional perspective. So that's a little bit uh, about me. Uh, why don't we go next? We'll just go in order around the, the screen. Ms. Brack, if you'd introduce yourself, please. Sure, can you hear me? Okay, my name's Angie Brack. And um, my husband, Tim, and I own um, a little craft beer store called Really Good Beer Stop. It's located on 10th North. We've been there for um, five years this month, actually. Um, our lease is out at the end of this month. And um, we are opening our second location in Nocatee Town Center um, <clears throat> shortly in the next month, um, just in time for right in the middle of a pandemic. So it should be perfect. Um, but uh, my husband has lived here for over 20 years um, or more. He went to UNF, and then we have been here with our three children and reside in Jack's Beach um, for over 10 years now. Fantastic. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, Mr. McGraw, how about you next? Hi, I'm David McGraw. I own Oyova Software, which is off of uh, Penman. It's a technology company. Moved to the area in 2004. Moved across the ditch for a couple of years, came back after about three. Uh, been here for at least 10 since then. Um, started a, a landscaping business with a, a friend as well. Um, just as somebody that's never lived anywhere longer than five years, this is where I decided to put my roots down, start a family, start a business. And um, yeah, absolutely love it here. So I'm happy to contribute in, in anything I can. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, Mr. Meza, how about you? Hello everyone, uh, my name is Fernando Meza. Uh, I have been living in Jackson Beach for 14 years. I am a Navy veteran. I'm a minority partner at a local bar in Jackson Beach called the Rec Tiki Lounge. And uh, I'm excited to hear everyone's uh, conversation here. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Adams. Meet myself. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Kate Adams. I'm with Southern Swells. Uh, my husband and we have a business partner, Jay. Um, we opened up about three and a half years ago. Um, me and my husband and our two kids both live in Jack's Beach. We've lived here for about three years, bought a house, and don't see us going anywhere ever. We absolutely fell in love and can't wait to just kind of better the community and see what we can do to help out. Awesome. Mr. Sams, how about you? Hey, hey, my name is Chase. I, um, my wife and I own the mini bar in Jack's Beach. We opened up a uh, second location in Deerwood at Gate Parkway. I am a Jack's Beach native, went to Fletcher. Only time I moved away was to uh, go to school at UCF. Came back here, worked in construction. My wife and I um, always kind of had this uh, kind of goal is to open up a donut shop. And we joked about it for a long time. And then 
just kind of went for it. So I uh, love the beach. Um, I'm always surfing at the pier, always surfing at the poles. And so this place is my stomping grounds. Love this area. Um, it's a little bit about me. Awesome. Thanks. Mr. Veal. Can't hear you, Sam. You haven't unmuted. How about now? Can you hear me now? We got you. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, uh, Sam Veal, uh, I, uh, the only thing I didn't do at the beach was come out of my mother's womb, and I tried. Uh, but since then, uh, uh, it saved for a few years of living in other wild places. Uh, I've been a beach resident for uh, quite a while, uh, since 1952. Uh, Fletcher uh, graduate, uh, my business uh, is All American Insurance Systems, which I opened in 1979 here at the beach. Uh, it's right next to Crystal Hamburgers, and I'm also the founder and executive uh, director of Spring in the Blues Festival, uh, Jack Speech Festivals, um, and it's a pleasure to be here. Great. Thank you, Sam. Miss Smith-Hale. Unmute myself. Hi, I'm Holly Smith-Hale. I'm the president and owner of Hen House Marketing. It's a boutique marketing and advertising firm. I'm a local native to the area, also a Fletcher graduate, a UNF graduate, uh, a beach, everything. Uh, we represent a ton of different clients locally, regionally, um, mostly locally and some nationally. Um, been in the, the industry for over 20 years and Hen House Marketing is three years old in July. So happy to be a part of the conversation. Great, uh, Ms. McGuire. Looks like she stepped away from her computer. We'll come back to her. Um, our official elected official uh, host for tonight is Council Member Georgette Dumont. If you'd like to introduce yourself, Georgette. Hi, I'm uh, Council Member Georgette Dumont. Um, I am my day job or my night job because I teach uh, graduate students is I'm a professor at UNF where I teach public and nonprofit management. Um, I've been on council for about two years now. Before that, I was on the planning commission for a long time. And I look forward to, he I wanna first thank you all for very much for taking the time to hang out with us tonight and be part of this visioning process. And um, so thank you so much for that. And I am looking forward to hearing what you all have to say. Thanks. Thank you. And then we also have uh, Vice Mayor Chris Hoffman, who is an observer. She'll be listening in for a little bit tonight. If you'd like to introduce yourself. Um, I don't think I need any introduction in this group. <laughs> Thank you guys all for participating. I'm just observing, I'll be lurking a little bit. Um, so just invite you to please be open and honest. Um, and thank you for uh, all that you do for small businesses in Jack's Beach. Awesome. And last but not least, Ms. McGuire, if you'd like to introduce. Sorry, I'm multitasking. I was on the other side of the house when I heard you call my name. Um, yeah, so my name is Rachel McGuire and my husband and I moved to the beach just over a year ago. Uh, we've been in Jacksonville since 07. I run daily operations for a local university um, and looking to get more involved in the local Jacksonville uh, beach community. So I'm really looking forward to this call. Great, thank you. Uh, you'll see that there are two other names on the screen. Uh, one of them is our meeting coordinator, Jacob Board. He's silent, unseen, but he keeps this up and running for us. And then uh, Chris Wright is one of our administrative assistants, and she is listening in so she can help take some notes. So we're all good with regard to that. Um, hopefully all of you received uh, via email a sheet of paper that talked about the community conversation guide and ground rules and questions for tonight. Did you all receive this in advance? Yes. I see a lot of nodding. Awesome. Uh, we'll just spend a quick minute. Um, I, I gave you the introduction that the purpose of the community conversation is for us to really have more of a relaxed uh, dining room table type conversation, uh, but it will focus around four questions that are on that list. And you'll notice that uh, once we get through the first one, we may jump around a little bit with numbers two and three before we move into four. Uh, the ground rules for tonight are pretty straightforward. 
We'd like to hear from all of you and we'd like to hear your particular opinions. They may not be uh, the same as others that are on the call and that's okay. Uh, we're looking to hear what you have to say, not what you think people want to hear. So um, I'll be asking questions. If you're silent, I may pick you out of the crowd and ask you to give your, your two cents worth on a particular topic. There's no such thing as a right answer, only your answer. Everyone will participate and hopefully no one will dominate the conversation. Um, try to understand the views of others. And uh, it's okay to disagree, but let's not be disagreeable during the course of the conversation. Uh, we're all here to, to hopefully move the city of Jack's Beach forward uh, as, we, as we move in that direction. So the, um, the first question that I'd like to ask to the panel, and I don't know, it, are you all familiar with using the uh, raise hand feature on Zoom? Yes, no? Well, if, if you wanna speak then just raise your hand up on the camera and we'll try to call you in order um, so we can go through it in some logical progression rather than everybody trying to shout over one another. But the, uh, the first question that I have for you is what are your aspirations for the community, for the city of Jacksonville Beach? And in particular, what kind of a community do you want to live in? So this isn't asking a specific question of, well, I think there should be a pedestrian crossing at this intersection with a flashing light. That's not the kind of community you wanna live in. That's a very specific uh, item that you'd like to see uh, tackled. But uh, we're really looking for your aspiration 10, 20, 30 years down the road. W what would you hope the city of Jacksonville Beach would be like that you want to live in with uh, your family and where you conduct your business, et cetera? Um, so who wants to take a stab at what that community of tomorrow would look like? Kate, we'll start with you. Um, I think my biggest thing is safety. Um, in all areas of the beach, whether you're downtown, up by Beach Boulevard, down in South Jacks, um, I think safety is number one. Um, you know, crime rate, that kind of thing. Um, that's my biggest concern, especially when you mentioned family. Um, I mean, my car got stolen right from my driveway on 9th Ave North. So like that was a, six months after we moved in, but I still love it here. Um, so I think safety is my number one in all aspects and Jack's Beach Police has been great, but I think there's areas where we can improve on the safety of the community um, and the visitors of the community and kind of just have a more um, basically standard way of life. This is how we, how we conduct here because I think we kind of have a bad rap in certain areas. Okay, great. Thank you. Who else wants to take a stab? David, let's uh, jump over to you. So I'd like to, my big thing about anywhere um, I visit or live is, you know, the ability to get out and walk around and have a very walkable town. Um, I, I really enjoy outdoor dining and, and I really like, I want to see Jacksonville as like a destination for young professionals that want to start businesses, that want to start their families, that, that, you know, want to come to Jacksonville Beach. And, um, you know, with that, I think you have to have a, a very um, open concept city where people can have outdoor dining um, and, and just take advantage. I mean, we have some of the best climate in the country. And uh, I would like to see just, you know, a little bit more of a outside entertainment options and things like that, that will draw a lot more um, people to the city and residents. Great, thank you. Um, Holly. Um, I just wanted to piggyback on, on what David said and that with regard to restaurants, um, I think we all, if, especially if you're from the area, love kind of a work, live, play community where we can do all those things. Um, I, I too love a walkable, bikeable, golf cartable area, any, any of the above very applicable for, for our type of lifestyle and, and having lived here all my life, it just makes sense. Um, but with regard to restaurants, I, I think absolutely now more than ever, we're all aware of how important that outdoor area is. Um, it's something that we, I think any, any locals always appreciated is any outdoor restaurant or any outdoor dining and bars included. Um, and, and, you know, 
shortly after the recession or right before the last recession started. Uh, we saw a lot of the great kind of places that we grew up going to, be it First Street Grill, um, a, lot, a lot of places on the beach that you just did every single weekend with outdoor entertainment and that's with families. It was, it was date night on the evenings. It was girls night, guys night. It was any number of things. It kind of accommodated large, various groups of people, tour, tourists included. Um, so I think we've lost uh, a good amount of places. There are still, the Tiki Bar included, there's still a handful of places that you can go, but they're fewer and further between. So I think it would be nice to see some more of that um, outdoor ambiance really promoted and added and more so than anything because we live at the beach. I find it painful that there's not a rooftop bar or several in the area. Painful that it's not here when it's in downtown Jacksonville and in other areas of Jacksonville, but not on our coastline. So that, that's just my two cents. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I think you're the first person in all of these conversations we've held that has brought up a rooftop bar or diner. That's, that's a good thing. Yeah, I bring that up frequently with all my friends, as do my friends, because it's, it, you know, that's the best place to enjoy the, the beach breezes, to see the beach view. And, and of course, Casa Marie, Marina um, has a very, very small footprint for that. But that's, that's, that's a really small footprint and we really have, it seems like they're, and it doesn't even have to be oceanfront to enjoy that, you know, just to have that feeling of enjoying the salt air. Great, thank you. Um, who else wants to go? Fernando, let's jump over to you. Uh, <clears throat> the, the aspirations that I, that I see in Jacksonville Beach is the, the local businesses that are here from mini donuts to the breweries that are here from Green Room to uh, the, the beer stop right across the street from Mello, you know, those are really awesome businesses that the city should embrace. You know, Holly was talking about rooftop bars, you know, providing a, a more of a family friendly environment in downtown besides the bars. We already have that. We could have more restaurants, you know, outdoor dining, you know, uh, then you want to include uh, the, the bicycle friendly environment that we have. You know, I have friends that move to Jacksonville Beach and they're excited to live at the beach. Well, get yourself a bike because you're gonna eat, you're, you're gonna use one, you're gonna eat one. Um, that type of environment, I think, is wonderful for this community. This is what's what make, make me fall, fall, fall in love with this place. Hey. We can't hear you, Fernando. Your mic turned off. Oh, there it is. Um, having having uh, uh, friends that are moving here with, with their kids, embracing Jacksonville Beach, they're excited of what it has to offer and what more else it could offer as well. Um, and one of the things that I wrote too is the accessibility that the beach or how accessible the beach is to, to the residents of, of Jacksonville Beach. You, know, you walk, you, you bike, you know, there's a lot of things to embrace. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's very, uh, hold on, let me see my notes. I just lost my train of thought, excuse me. But I think the, uh, you know, everything that Jack's Beach has right now, it's wonderful. And I think there's going to be more additions to make this beach even better that I think the aspiration, some of the aspirations that I have are being somewhat fulfilled and I think will be fulfilled in the near future. That is it. Okay, great. Thank you. If you all see me looking over to the side, it's because I'm taking notes on everything that you're saying. So, uh, who wants to go next? Chase, your hand went up first. Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, so, uh, a lot of you guys have never even heard of, which is kind of crazy because how small this community is and like driving down Tenman or whatever, you know, I just, either my, I might be driving too straight or whatever, but um, for us, and I think with Kate too, we, we, we've become really good friends, like us and Kate and Corey with Southern Swells, um, we've become really good friends and really had to 
had a chance to really experience from them coming in from another city to come into Jack's Beach. And for me to grow up in Jack's Beach and it kind of becomes a new normal. Um, what I'd like to see, and I think a lot of you guys kind of harped on it too, was just a safe accessibility. Um, we're kind of a little bit further down, a little bit further west um, towards the beach. And um, if you look at other cities um, like Tampa or Atlanta or Miami or any of these kind of coastal cities, you get these like, you get this feel of being able to move around pretty easily. Um, like I'd love to be able to go eat somewhere awesome, go to Swells, go to really good beer, go to the Tiki bar, like do all this kind of stuff and not have to jump in an Uber. I know that we've got, we've got beachside buggies and stuff, but you see a lot of these cities popping up with lines or all this kind of stuff. And uh, those terrify me because I would not want to jump on Beach Boulevard and go east on a scooter and try to just dodge traffic when nobody stops, stop signs and all that kind of stuff. So I, um, I think that that'd be really great. I love the idea of rooftop bars. Um, I think that that's just great. I was just in front of you with my family and saw life had this great view of the ocean. Um, and it was, ama it was amazing. So uh, I think I, I, what's beautiful here too, and we're already kind of going into question number two, I think the 10 people here would probably agree on 95% of the things that we're talking about. Um, like having a better community where we're, 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 we're actually connected with each other um, and having these kind of boards is awesome. But I would love to see a safe accessibility from my shop all the way down to the pier um, and have nice, have like a really good ambiance where there's rooftop bars, there's, there's things that are a little bit better, um, outdoor music, things that can make Jacksonville Beach a desirable place instead of people going up to Atlantic Beach and going to One Ocean or going down south to Ponte Vedra and going to Sawgrass. Like everybody kind of either goes north or south. And I think we have this bloodline of Beach Boulevard that basically drives us from downtown all the way to the beach. And we should really take advantage of that. So that's kind of my little, my little plug. Excellent, thank you. Uh, Sam, you had started raising your hand when Chase beat you to it. So we'll go to you now. <laughs> uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, good. So uh, I like to take notes. So when I got this, I started giving some good thought to, to these questions. Um, so my notes really say that, uh, what are my aspirations for our community? And uh, they're kind of big, broad, broad brushed. Um, and I'm a, uh, I'm a broad brush guy, uh, is that we conduct our public and private affairs with civility and that we make decisions regarding our community on as close to a consensus basis as possible. Uh, some of my, what do I, you know, what kind of community do I want to live in? I want to live in a community that is intelligently governed, that is well managed, that is welcoming, that is civil, that is clean, that's affordable, and is safe. That was uh, definitely broad brush. Thank you. Um, I believe there's a couple that we haven't heard from yet. One of them being Rachel and one being an Angie. And Angie, you rose your hand first, so go ahead. Oh, good. Oh, wait. Okay, there we are. <laughs> unmute, mute, unmute. Okay. Um, I'm just going to tack on to Chase's comment about um, going north or south. You know, I'm right in the center, so I actually um, reside and uh, my business is on the same exact street in Jack's Beach um, makes it quite convenient. But also being in North Jack's Beach, I, I have to admit to you that on the weekends or any time in between with my children, what they, what they know and where they wanna go, it's we head west on beach to head where these guys are, like you know, mini bar and Southern Swells and that kind of thing and up beach, or we're headed north up to AB or we're headed south to PV. Like there's no, we're kind of like, in my opinion, unfortunately, Jack's Beach, even though as much as I'm in love with the community of people and where we live and where my children go to school here down the street also, it's become really a corridor opposed to a destination. And that's um, in general, as a very general statement, I would obviously rather to be a destination to people than to be such just a drive pass through town, if you will. Um, so that, that's, that's a general, and then, you know, and then the thing that's so appealing to me, and I'm gonna call the elephant out in the room and say that in my opinion, we have a community and, in, and I'm sure there are people that'll, you know, have comments to say about AB, that town center that is too crowded and not a lot of parking and these kind of things that they have negatively to say. 
but it's kind of like, like everybody's still going there, still pretty packed on the weekends, still pretty everybody's still managing to figure out how to go to pack those restaurants full. And even with a, in the middle of a pandemic outside, outdoor seating and outdoor dining. And, you know, I can do everything from go have breakfast with my children, grab ice cream in the afternoon, a burger for lunch. My temp, my husband and I can have a wonderful dinner and then go grab a drink again on a rooftop bar. So we can do any, it spans the gamut on what we can do in that area. And again, to chase this point about transportation and traveling, it eliminates, I mean, even though you just, there's not a lot of parking, I'm, I'm not driving. I'm, personally, it's encouraging me not to drive, to be honest, and the individuals not to commute and we, you know, have all these issues like we do with um, people driving in and parking in Jack's Beach. So that's, I would just like to see it become more of a destination and we're going to get to specifics on that too, but just more of a destination than such a corridor, because I do feel like it connects the two um, more than it serves as a destination. And I mean, downtown more so, but. Awesome. Thank you. And uh, Rachel, I think that leaves you. Yeah, so I, I love what everybody's talking about. And, you know, some of the notes that I have here, you know, people have already hit on. And I think one of the big biggest shocks that I had when my husband and I moved to the beach last summer, you know, because we, we would spend most of our time out here anyway, but we'd have to drive from, you know, across the ditch and hang out with beach people when we weren't beach people. But until we lived here, we didn't really understand everything that you guys are bringing up on the call, which is, Jack's Beach is, is somewhat challenging to be a pedestrian in. We live off uh, 16th Avenue South, just west of 3rd Street. So we just, we walk across 3rd Street and walk right, you know, right up the beach. But there's so much traffic and it's not as though you can walk down there and you can just like hop from place to place to place. Everything's really spread out. Nothing's really seems like it's connected. So that whole corridor feel, you know, we get that, we get that and we understand that. It's just a little bit more difficult to say, okay, I'm gonna go hang out at the beach. Everything's right there without having to, um, you know, stretch, you know, get on your bike or get on, get in your car and, and travel to get to, to destinations. I think the transportation issue might, you know, be something that we can address that would help out with that. I don't think it's, it's not that spread out that we can't fix it, I would say probably pretty simply, but it is something that doesn't really seem to be um, a focus right now, if that makes sense. That does, thank you. Um, so I think each of you have taken an initial stab at that first question one. Before we move on to, to question two, and it starts to broach into it a little bit, um, you all talked about, or there was a really high uh, conversation level with relationship to the walkability, biking, uh, golf cart type environment. Uh, do you feel that this community has a, a distance to go in order to get to the level where um, people have that range of mobility throughout the community? Are we going in the right direction or is, there a, is that a pretty big gap between where we are and where we need to be on that topic? And Dave? So, being here for the last 10 years, I don't think I've seen a lot of progress in any of the mobility. Um, it's been kind of, in my opinion, a little stagnant. Um, I think about other cities, some that we want to compare ourselves to, some we don't, but I always look to St. Pete and I feel like it is an insanely walkable town and I absolutely love going there. Um, I feel like I can get to any part of the town, like city and it feels way larger than what our downtown is, but I have no problem getting around and and enjoying all the different stops. And, and another example that we don't want to compare ourselves to is Daytona. I've stayed, I feel like 30 blocks away from that main amphitheater and it felt completely natural to walk that whole way with all the little stuff going on. And I would never do that in Jack's Beach because it feels like it's, you know, it's way too far. So um, just the two different experiences of what I feel like if I'm not, I, even living at the beach, I also live on 16th South. I Uber or drive downtown and I'm like 16 blocks away. So. Gotcha. And uh, Fernando? Uh, to piggyback on that, on the, on the walkability and, and, and everything that's going on. So first street, right from beach to, what is that? Sixth Avenue North. Uh, there's a bike path that says bikes may use full lanes. And 
here at the beaches, even before quarantine, on a really beautiful spring day, you'll see a lot of people riding their bikes from the south, south end of Jacksonville Beach to the north end to Neptune Beach to Alani Beach. Uh, one of the things that I would have loved to seen is to expand that bike path that's on First Street. Uh, a, lot of a lot of drivers don't know that bikes can use the full lane on First Street. Uh, maybe a couple more signs to and more visible but expanding that bike path to the south and north and i think will improve and maybe add some more along the avenues from the south south avenues and north avenues just to keep the bikes the bicyclists you know safe uh and then in addition to that of course the pedestrian crosswalks that we have right now i think you know, I like to walk on the beach, but sometimes it takes me forever to cross 3rd Street on 7th Avenue South because of traffic. Now, the nearest traffic light is on 3rd Avenue or 13th Avenue. Now, could we add another light or a pedestrian crosswalk with, with blinking lights? And one thing that I saw when I went to St. Augustine, and St. Augustine Beach is right by the fire station in front of the pier. Uh, they had one of those, but they also had these uh, flags, orange flags, and it recommends you, recommends people to use them if the drivers can't see the lights flashing. You just, you know, uh, something like that would be great to see here. And I think as a beach community, as everyone has a bicycle, I think we should add that to a, a plan in the vision, in the vision plan. I just have a question for you, Mike. Uh, uh, because uh, 3rd Street uh, is actually A1A, which is a state highway, does that affect uh, the city's uh, ability to uh, make more crossovers or uh, put more walkways uh, or more traffic lights? Uh, is there some sort of a local government, state government interaction that has to occur for that? Uh, yes and yes are the best uh, ways to answer that. A1A is a state highway corridor. Um, so anything that wants to be done on that corridor has to go through the state for an approval process, some of which has to meet warrants or requirements. I can tell you that the long range plan for the, the state is to have two more pedestrian crossings on A1A north of Beach Boulevard. Mm. One at second and one up at, I believe, 15. Mm -hmm. So those are two more crossings that people will have the opportunity to push a button, get mm -hmm. lights and be able to cross at uh, intersections. And, and as a quick follow right, up. Yeah. Sorry. Is there any uh, conversations being made uh, with respect uh, to the medians uh, that uh, uh, have been put in that actually block a straight uh, east-west uh, pathway that some people on some roads in Jack's Beach uh, have to uh, walk either north or south to get to uh, a, a crossable location? Not that I'm aware of at this point in time. Okay. Yes, Holly. Am I unmuted? Okay. <laughs> um, I think going back to your original question was, what if any was the gap or how big was the gap as far as accessibility goes um and i just feel like partially any of the gap or presenting problems maybe in jack speech are as indicative of those of just jacksonville at large is that we're just a really large area that's very spread out and we don't have really good transportation accessibility from in one area to the uh, to the next um, and I'm, I'm not sure what the solution to that is. I do know and I agree uh, with Angie that I feel like Atlantic Beach Town Center has done a very good job of promoting that area as a destination and that you could spend an entire day there, either with your family, with the date, with the group, any of those things. Um, I, I don't think most businesses have any problem with it being crowded and as a resident i have no problem with going to a place that's populated because it looks like a fun place <laughs> so um other than you know the current climate maybe um but in general i didn't know if 
potentially just like Jacksonville has various boroughs, San Marco, Riverside, the different places, maybe that's potentially something to look at for Jack's Beach. Because I completely agree also with what was mentioned earlier about the corridors in between downtown to say Atlantic Beach and down to Ponte Vedra. Having grown up here, I don't know that we ever used to say, I live in South Jack's Beach versus North Jack's Beach. And I do, we all, I say that all the time now, we live in South Jack's Beach. So maybe that's something to look at in that we identify corridor areas, boroughs within Jack's Beach and promote those the same way Atlantic Beach has done with their town center. Because we clearly all know where downtown Jack's Beach is, but maybe your mini bar, your Southern Swells is uptown Jack's Beach. And then there's South Jack's Beach and then there's North Jack's Beach. And that each one of those could be branded and promoted um, as a destination, identifying the multiple things you could do as a day trip to any one of those places. And back to Mini Bar's point earlier is that if you could get a ride from any one of those places to the next, that'd be fantastic as well. Beach buggies is great, but we would need a lot more buggies. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Chase? Yeah, I'll just kind of harp off of what everybody's been saying. I mean, obviously where we're at is off Beach Boulevard and Penn and like just jam right in that corner. And I mean, for me and my family, I've got two kids and all this kind of stuff. So I, from Taco Lou at Beach Boulevard, straight east down Beach Boulevard, from the lifeguard station all the way to north of the pier. That's like my T of where I would like to be able to see a lot of this fluidity and movement going on. I mean, that's, the, that's like our, specifically the beach, the pier area and, and the lifeguard station from that whole strip down Ocean or first. That's, that's, the big, that's the big spot that I would be worried about. And so, I mean, from going from Lou down Beach Boulevard, uh, I know that we're an FDOT right of way. We have a gigantic FDOT right of way coming through our parking lot and then also on the other side of the parking lot. So, I mean, there's accessibility that we can, I don't know how that would work, but maybe extending sidewalks or extending pedestrian um, walks into, into, into actual parking spaces that are being used right now from companies. Uh, but that's an FDOT right of way. And so then we get to Third Street. Um, which kind of, as Mike was saying, is what it is. Then you go across to, to the lifeguard station to, uh, to the pier. I have never, ever ridden my bike from the lifeguard station towards the pier. I, I was just, it's just crazy. The, the roundabouts and how that all works around and people are trying to figure out where parking and all that kind of stuff. It, it seems just, I've never done it. Um, I've always just either jumped in a car or gone straight to the pier to go to surf or they're going to go hit the lifeguard station or the old pier. Like, I would love to see that as, as like we say, like a sand peak, what, what David was talking about. Like, St. Pete is freaking awesome. Um, Tampa area is awesome. We have this great, beautiful beach, this nice sand area. And like everybody's saying, everybody's going to Atlantic Beach to go to One Ocean to get a cocktail, hey, hang outside and, and eat and everything. Um, I mean, a lot of that falls onto us as making this environment for downtown Jack's Beach, you know, uh, wantable, like wanting to go and put a business on that strip. Um, and so I would love to see that area develop as long as, but I'm also a little bit selfish because I'm on Beach Boulevard, to be able to take from Taco Lou straight east, straight to the beach, be able to go on a bike, be able to go on a line, be able to go on a golf cart and not have to worry about getting a hit, doing these crazy crosswalks, or doing anything wild like that. Um, and, and then I feel like that also encourages for, for tourism too. Like, hey, you can basically park your car, um, in a gigantic parking lot or Uber to Taco Lou, get you some tacos, go to Southern Swells, get you a good beer, go to a really good stop, you know, a little bit further down the road and kind of hit everything up in one night and not fear for your life. So um, that's kind of my big one. Okay. Let me, uh, we, we've already started to broach into the section of question two which is what will it take to reach our aspirations? And I think we're hitting the uh, mobility topic pretty hard. Um, are, there, are there any other steps the city could be taking to reach the aspirations that you all started off with? Kate, you had your hand, then we'll go to Angie second. Yes. Okay. Um, so first I've been in Rhode Island for like the big chunk of the summer, but I saw that there. <laughs> Yay. It's been so hot though. It's not really that exciting. Um, so 
I saw that Penman is getting a crossing light, um, which I'm very excited about. I love to run on the other side of Penman and it's impossible to cross there. So I think that it's fantastic that that is happening. Um, I guess I saw I, rumors travel, word spreads, but I saw if all of in Atlantic Beach that um, the Kmart lot, if all of that develops, there was talk on a um, bridge that you would walk across to get to the beach. Um, again, it was rumored, don't know if it's happening, but I know down in, um, like if you're driving down to St. Augustine, they have the bridge that you can walk across to get across the beach. So you're not involving traffic, but you're still easily accessing the beach versus, in, uh, versus the other side of third. So didn't know if that, how much that cost, if that was ever talked about in Jack's speech, but it might be a good idea to maybe talk about if it's even possible to help keep the safety of pedestrians. Cause I don't know the exact statistics, but I think we're pretty high up there for pedestrian and motor vehicle um, accidents. The, uh, the state of Florida consistently ranks in the top three or top five across the entire nation for pedestrian and bicycle uh, vehicle accidents. And I wanna say the Tampa Bay area was number one or number three in the nation for a metro area. And Miami, Jacksonville, and Orlando were like, you know, three, five, and seven nationwide. So you're right, it's definitely not a good statistic that we have in the state of Florida. Um, any other thoughts? Uh, Angie, you were next on the list. I just had a quick question um, regarding the beachside buggies, if you don't mind, and you don't have to speak specifically to it, but my understanding, and again, uh, if you're talking about in this, a group of people also like rumors do fly pretty quickly with small businesses if you're not familiar with that about as quick as city so um one of the things that people talk about or that i have heard is that beachside buggies has actually had a really hard run at it when it kind came to um the discussions with the city and the support from city commission and planning um i i, I again i could be um that could be inaccurate but um i do feel like i'm again i'm I would like to say how happy I am that we are doing this and that you are supported to do this because in um, the last few years in my experience with the planning commission and with the city council trying to open a small business in Jacksonville Beach, um, it has been um, pushed back and um, it is a, a, a more of a whack-a-mole situation, if you will, instead of planning. So it's very exciting to see that, that we're talking about like a, a vision. But um, as far as beachside buggies though, I, I mean, I think that people, with that rumor going by, I guess my, my point is with that going um, ahead, it really does hinder other individuals that want to come forward and start things and people that have ideas that are innovative possibly for transportation or business ideas um, in any type of capacity. Um, those types of rumors from, uh, some are validated, I will say, um, in small business pushback and new innovations with the city government in itself in the past um, hinders that. So I think that that is what I would look for a little bit when it comes to these ideas that they're, that um, the city government is a little more open to innovations. And um, I feel like Beachside Buggies did a, a, um, a good run at it. And I, I mean, I think they're still going, but um, I don't think it's caught. I, I don't know if partially, I guess my point is, I'm not so sure that what placement it has to do with the pushback and the support or lack of support from our city government fully um, in certain aspects and um, different businesses like that, that actually are then being proposed as solving problems, if that makes sense. That's a, that's a good question I'd like to segue off of, uh, to ask all of the small business people here in the room, or large business, whichever you happen to be. Um, do you feel that the city government has done a good job of not just outreach, but partnership with the business communities in order to move the city forward. Fernando, we'll start with you. And then Sam, you had a hand raised next. Uh, I think the city has done a, a, a good job in reaching out. Obviously we're having this conversation right now. And I think in order to move the beaches forward in a direction that we all can agree and be a better Beach for future generations to come, this type of roundtable discussions, I think, means a lot, not just to the residents, but to the small business owners here. 
in California and LA, it's such a big city. You really can't have these type of conversations. And if you do, they get lost in translation and it never reaches the right individual, city elected officials to make that change. Here in Jacksonville Beach, we have that power and that is something to be grateful for. Now with the beach buggies, what Angie was saying, I want to say, I'm not correct, and Mr. Jet Deman, she might have more information as well, is I want to say JTA partnered with beach buggies. Now, unfortunately, right now with this pandemic, there's not many people out and about and using beach buggies. But one of the things that I talked to one of the owners of beach buggies was expanding and having certain uh, pickup locations to where they will drop the residents off or um, getting together with all the small businesses and give ideas to beach buggies so they could be a better asset to the city of Jacksonville Beach. Okay, thank you. And Sam, you want to just talk on the topic too? Uh, yeah, my, my, my question uh, really is, uh, uh, I think for everybody, and perhaps uh, it might be uh, a possibility, I know I'd be willing to uh, pay my own way, but I know when I was involved in some of the other uh, uh, meetings such as this uh, with the city, I took it upon myself to Sam, you've frozen up on us. Now we're in suspense. <laughs> you took it upon yourself to. Okay, so Sam's gonna leave us hanging here for a minute and that's okay. If he, you know, if he gets his improved mobility back, then that's awesome. Um, <laughs> uh, David, did you wanna talk on this topic too? I saw your hand starting to go up. Microphone. Yeah, I wanted to get in something on question number two before we move on it. And uh, sounds like we're moving past it, but can I make a comment on question number two? Absolutely. So I think what it's going to take to re reach these aspirations is some really bold changes to the look of the city. So when I go on Google Maps right now, there are 29 ways to turn off of Beach Boulevard after the bridge. So as we go, that worked great 20, 30 years ago when the population was an eighth of what it is. Now we have to start just closing off some and make people have to use major turnoffs like 9th Street, like A1A and 1st Street and rely more on the secondary roads so that traffic flows more easily. But more importantly, that allows somebody to walk down the sidewalk without having to stop every 15 feet because there's a car turning in or there's a red light, or there's a you know crosswalk. You can't walk Beach Boulevard because there's so much cross traffic. Secondly, when you're looking at making it walkable and enjoyable and changing the look of the city, one of the big ideas that got me involved in trying to shape Jacksonville, and the reason why I'm on this call is, like I think Second Avenue North between First and Second Street is begging to be shut down, paved in, fenced in and create an entire outdoor space for surfer bar, for that brewery, for Campeche Bay. You can easily shut down that street, create a walkable great courtyard that's right next to public parking that would also support the, the policing of the big events when you need to check who's coming in and out and create a fantastic outdoor space. But that's gonna take someone bold enough to say, we don't need these five parking spots on this road and we want to pave it down and make it, you know, not accessible anymore. That's really big thinking, but that's what we need to do to grow it with our population. Rachel, and then Sam will come back to you after that. Okay. You left us all hanging in suspense. <laughs> I, I, I got cut off. Yeah, so to piggyback on what David was just saying, I actually was gonna mention this earlier. Um, you know, my husband and I ride bikes with friends as I'm sure everybody on this call pretty much does this at the beaches. One of the biggest complaints that a lot of the residents seem to have is that there's so much traffic on that, on that road out there. And everybody is, you know, wondering like, why can't we just close this section off? 
in front of the businesses, right between the, ba the beach and the businesses to just pedestrian traffic, bicycles, you know, skateboarders, roller skaters, or whatever that is. I feel like, and many people have shared this with me as well from the community, that that would increase pedestrian traffic. And if we had secondary um, locations where drivers could park that are really, really close and they can just hop over a quarter of a block to get where they were going, um, then that would make it a little bit easier to traverse that area and uh, create more foot traffic for a lot of the businesses because oftentimes, as an example, when we get, you know, our, our Saturday or Sunday to go ride bikes out of the beach, we'll completely uh, avoid First Street for a big stretch of it just because there's so much traffic on the, on the vehicles and those roads are so narrow that it becomes like you feel like you're taking your, your life into your hands trying to get out there. Um, and then tangential to that, um, some of the other points that I was thinking in terms of, um, you know, reaching our aspirations with, with some of the things that we're, we're talking about on the call tonight, groups like this, I think are so very valuable because they're so diverse and they bring so many different minds together and so many different experiences to share thoughts and uh, creative ideas from the business perspective, as well as from uh, the local community member perspective. So if we can have kind of both of them in some way come together. So for instance, the business folks are like, okay, this is what we feel is going to really drag business. This is going to create new business. This is going to, um, you know, provide for development and growth. That's awesome. But also including from the local community member, uh, the people who live out here and say, okay, well, what do you guys want to see? What do you guys, what do you want to spend your money on? And bringing those two groups together, um, I think would be really helpful long-term as well. Awesome. Thank you. Sam, we'll, we'll go back to you. Yeah, I was just saying that, uh, uh, as, as I'm sure you know, because of the community that you came from, but there's an awful lot of communities on both coasts of Florida that are of, uh, pretty close to the same size and scale of Jacksonville Beach. I, I know that we're a community of about 23,000 people, and we are also a geographical community that's only about 22 square miles. Um, as opposed to St. Pete, which has uh, got 265,000 people and 137,000 square miles. Uh, I'm sorry, 137 square miles. Um, so when we're looking at, at scale and scope of uh, activity, activities for communities, I think it'd be a great idea to go on some fact-finding missions, um, and, you know, not paid by the taxpayer, but uh, interested parties, almost like uh, how uh, the uh, Chamber of Commerce folks uh, go, but to go to places like New Smyrna Beach and see what they're doing, uh, to uh, uh, Cocoa Beach and, and see, I, my brother lives there, I go there frequently. Um, you know, they deal with traffic uh, in a pretty uh, interesting way. Uh, there's a lot of walkability, there's a lot of bicycling. I, I, I ride bikes, I've been riding bikes, uh, you know, for the last 30 years, uh, up and down Jack's Beach, all of the roads. Uh, the one thing that I think that we have to take a look at as far as that goes is the safety and the interactions between pedestrians, cyclists, uh, you have various levels of cyclists, uh, and also the realities of the law, because a bicycle, as I read it, uh, is considered a, a vehicle and subject to the vehicular laws of Florida, and yet you get a lot of people that go the wrong way, ride on the wrong side of the road, don't pay attention to stop signs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I know and I understand that because there's various levels that there's the casual uh, cyclist. But again, is it going to be, uh, is it going to have to take a terrible tragedy to occur before that type of uh, potentiality is addressed? Uh, it's just something that we're a small area in a small town and we're packing people in here like wildfire. I don't, I, I don't know. Do you know what the actual build out of our community is? I know that we're pretty close to build out, aren't we? Uh, pretty much every parcel is developed, but there's still opportunities to tear down and rebuild at higher density in a few places. And that means to go vertical. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so uh, again, I think there's micro ways to look at things. There's macro ways to look at things. Uh, but if you get people and you go and see, well, what are best practices in other communities? Uh, I, I think that there's a lot to be learned by uh, making those trips and uh, checking it out. 
Excellent, thank you. Um, keeping an eye on the clock, 625, let's move on to question three. What is standing in the way of achieving these aspirations that we've talked about? It could be very specific or very broad. Sam, we'll start with you and then we'll go around from there. Well, it sounds broad, but it's really specific. And I would say that what stands in the way is uh, selfish self-interest and unrealistic expectations and lack of follow through uh, by the uh, stakeholders uh, of the community. Um, uh, I, again, uh, when you talk about community, I think you have to come up with a, a reasonable definition of what that is and who are the stakeholders of the community. And so is it okay for a multinational corporation to come in and start buying up large uh, swaths of property uh, for a large scale development uh, uh, is, you know, what do, do the citizenry, uh, what, are, what are their, uh, their options when that happens, uh, when you've got people coming in and, and uh, uh, getting variances uh, uh, of uh, building density and, and putting two houses on a hundred foot lot and all of those things, which again, leads to more people. I, I know as a business person, it's great to have a lot of folks because that means it's good for business, but also, with density and population comes more problems of scale and scope and how do you manage that uh, with the resources that we have and the limitations uh, that we have as far as uh, roadways and sidewalks. Got it, thank you. Fernando, we'll jump over to you next. Uh, Sam has a very, very good point. Um, you know, a lot of the aspirations that we all have here in Jackson Beach, the, the obstacles are we keep pulling in different directions and there has to be some sort of middle ground where not just the, the, the local business owners and leaders and residents have to come in together, but we all have to find a common ground and move forward and adapt to it. Uh, I mean, there's been what, if I'm correct, we have had this sort of vision plan for the past 10 years, maybe a little bit longer. We still haven't been able to, to find that middle ground. Uh, right now, I feel positive. Uh, I'm confident enough that with these conversations that within a year, we'll find a vision plan, we'll ex you know, will be executed and we can move forward. You know, uh, I know there's, you know, where, when Sam was just talking about the, the, the variances and, you know, building a duplex in a hundred lot, you know, a hundred foot lot, you know, we have to look at these codes and make sure they're updated and it goes into what we now we're losing what Fernando. You guys want. That is just I have to begin right now. Uh oh. Can you guys? Can you guys hear me? You're breaking up, Sam. Can you put your um? Can you guys hear me? Turn off your mic. I think I need feedback from you. Yeah. How do I turn it off? Um, at the lower left-hand corner, you'll see a little picture of a microphone, and when you talk, there's a green bar. If you click on that, there you go. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Right. Am I still breaking up, or am I good to go now? Good to go? All right, good. Um, what was the last thing you guys heard me saying? Uh, you were talking about moving forward with the uh, vision plan and uh, okay. positive step, and then you started to get choppy. Okay, I think that was towards the end of, of what I was saying is, I think this, this round table discussion, I think once we all get our ideas and execute this within the next year, I think we'll be able to move forward and have you know the vision that this community needs and deserves for, for, for the next generations. Okay, thank you. Um, Holly or Rachel, did one of you have your hand raised next? I did, but if Rachel wants to go first, that's fine. I'll go after you. Um, I think the question being what's getting potentially in the way of, of reaching these aspirations, I just had 
notated just very general thoughts of just kind of lack of communication and awareness, understanding, um, and and having having participated or at least attended several council meetings and worked with innumerable clients, various industries and all of Jacksonville and several at Jacksonville Beach and on all the beaches. Um, a, a lot of group think gets in the way um, so that a lot of times when someone who is actually an expert in their industry who, you know, as a restaurant or hospitality owner who has 30 years of, of experience in multiple locations is trying to develop something, there can often be a lot of pushback, understandably with resident concerns or any number of concerns. But I think a lot of times group think just gets in the way and, and true communication breaks down and they're not willing to hear or see or understand what does or doesn't work within within a, within an industry type. So um, for, fortunately for us and what we do, we've had the the pleasure to work with a variety of different industries. So we get a, some insight and intel into the various challenges and obstacles for each one. But I think again, respectfully, it makes sense why several people who either vote or participate in and, and various groups wouldn't know all of those obstacles and challenges. So, you know, it, as an example, it would not make sense for a restaurateur to open a fine dining steak establishment in the heart of downtown district Jack's Beach. It just, it wouldn't sustain. So, and, 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 a, and a restaurateur in that industry understands that and for innumerable reasons. So I think a, a lot of it is just kind of, kind of group think because of, whether we've lived here and it's always been a certain way or that's what we're we're comfortable with or we just don't fully understand the opposing side um i think that's one of probably our biggest obstacles um the same thing goes with the variety of festivals and events um that would happen in the downtown district and all the pushback that comes with it understandably again so many of those events are fantastic springing the blues is an example but you know as residents we're often fearful and put a lot of initial feet or pushback without necessarily a rationale for that and without learning the other sides of that. So um, how to combat that? I'm not positively sure how to do that, but I'm positive communication is the best way to start. Um, I don't know how you involve so many people and hear all the thoughts. Um, but a lot of that is definitely resident thinking. I am a resident, have again a native here forever, so I understand, but you know, businesses have a different viewpoint and we, you know, and, and something we haven't necessarily fully addressed is most of what we're talking about is extremely relevant for locals and residents who live here and us moving about from beach to beach and area to area. But a lot of these businesses in Jack's Beach in particular need those people over the ditch, need the townies, and, and, and we need tourists when they come into town. And so, um, I think we have to we have to be thinking of what their perspective and viewpoint is when they attend and, and visit the area as well. Excellent. Um, does anybody else want to speak on this particular one before we move on to question four? Okay. <clears throat> we'll move on to question four, but this is a this is a little bit more of a fun exercise. Uh, what would you, what would give you hope that the community is moving in the right direction? And the example is, imagine that you moved away from Jack's Beach for a period of 20 years. And then you came back to the community. And you drove down the streets, you walked through the neighborhoods, you went to the downtown, you went to the parks, whatever it might be. What is it that you would see? What is it that you would feel? What is it that you would experience? that told you that Jacksonville Beach had gone in the right direction over the 20 years that you were gone. So I'll give you each a couple seconds to think about it, but it sounds like Rachel's already thought about it and is ready to go. Go ahead, Rachel. I think, I think if I were to leave and come back and in 20 years, the, the beaches felt vibrant and um, you know energetic, but without the crazy industrialized um tour like heavy tourist destination feel but it was more of a community feel but it was vibrant and it was exciting and it it had activities 
seven days a week, I think that would be amazing. Um, you know, obviously the beaches aren't going to look the same on a Wednesday afternoon at one o'clock that they're going to look like on a Saturday afternoon at one o'clock. But if we can have a level of activity that is fairly consistent throughout the week, seven days a week, without dipping over into that, um, that heavy tourist field, we can keep the, the culture and the community as a local beach community and destination, I think that would be a win. Fantastic, thank you. Who wants to go next? Fernando. Uh, Rachel took a couple words out of my mouth, but if I was to come back in 20 years and I will hope to see it, it's being a very vibrant, prosperous community uh, where the beach life has been embraced and it kept that small town feeling. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I decided to stay here and I've moved back home to California, which is the small town feel here. Uh, being able to come back in 20 years and seeing uh, a lot of the local businesses still here, same size or even bigger, and, and, and everyone here supporting each other. Um, that is something that in my imagination, if I was to leave and come back in 20 years, that it would be great to see. Awesome. Thank you. Sam? Uh, uh, I'd, I'd echo what Fernando said. Uh, what I'd really like to see if I come back in, in uh, uh, 20 years is that uh, Third Avenue South, uh, which goes uh, right by uh, the uh, Taco Bell and Ginger's, because it seems to be a wide roadway that has uh, uh, sidewalks on both sides and goes all the way down to the end uh, that ends at the uh, school. I'd like to see that become the next commercial or the next uh, uh, beneficial corridor uh, for um, the kinds of places that the guys were talking about earlier, uh, the little, little San Marco type places where there's uh, uh, really neat little shops and businesses because uh, we, it, you just can't keep, the, you can't keep doing it in the space that we have now. It's got to, it's got to spread out and grow a little bit more. I know there's some, you know, some uh, pioneers uh, that are working Ninth Street now uh, pretty well in uh, those areas, and I'm excited about that. Uh, but I think that uh, the main thing that I hope to see in 20 years is that there's a world-class pickleball facility in Jacksonville Beach. And with that, I'm going to have to jump. I apologize, but I've got another uh, uh, engagement I have to go to. Thank you all so much uh, for uh, let me uh, participate in this. It's been wonderful, and I look forward to hopefully being part of it again. Thanks. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. So we still have a few that haven't gone yet. Who wants to go next? Dave, followed by Kate. So if I left and came back in 20 years, I would hope that we'd have more than two or three places to eat where you can actually see water. Um, so that's the thing that blows my mind about living in a place called Jacksonville Beach and we can't see any water when there's dining. I would love to see the marina, beach marina with uh, where Mavi is be completely rejuvenated because that is like a prime space that should be a highlight and a feature of this community and it's not. I mean, I know there's plans and stuff in, in place, but I mean, waterfront dining when I moved here, I think somebody mentioned it earlier about First Street Grill and some others um, has completely disappeared. And, and it's, it's pretty sad when I have family come into town and I can't take them anywhere to have a drink or food on the water. Awesome. Thanks. Kate, you're up next. Um, David, I completely agree with what you said. You took the words right out of my mouth. Um, when I have family come to visit, it's like, okay, we have to hit up the same spots that have the waterfront dining. So it's like Casa Marina, we try Mavi, we try when the pier was open to get tacos and stuff. Um, so I 100% agree, David, that we should have way more options for oceanfront dining, rooftop bars, that kind of thing. And then also, um, I just think about this amazing path on, you know, Beach Boulevard that 
leads you down to first street where it's like you can fit a golf cart you can run on it you can ride your bike on it you can rollerblade you can skate or you can do whatever you want on it um and it takes you down to an area where it's cut off for cars um wherever that may be logistically who knows but um just having that space that you can put your golf cart on safely and not have to deal with the traffic of the roads and you know obviously they can only go so fast um, I envision something like that to get you down to these areas where you can park, uh, park sorry, my accent, park your golf cart <laughs> into a spot and then walk around and go, you know, grab a drink, grab ice cream, go watch um, a live performance at the pavilion and, um, you know, all these fun things that we can do. We're just, you know, not doing it or we don't have the plans in place to do it. So. That's my two cents. Awesome, thank you. I think we've still got a couple left that haven't gone yet. Holly, we'll start with you. Um, so 20 years, since I obviously never leave, I don't know that that'll ever happen, but if I were to fast forward, I think it'd be great if uh, I'd love to see a very welcoming and diverse speeches. Um, uh, I would love it if it was a bit greener. I mean, we are a beach community. I think we should respect the beaches more and that should be seen um, particularly at a variety of business places. That would be fantastic. Some really cool places in Greenville, as an example, have composting in their restaurants. That's fantastic. Um, you know, getting away, I mean, not gonna go on a green diatribe here, but you know, getting away from plastic bags and stuff like that. I think that's reflective of a beach culture. That'd be fantastic to see much sooner than 20 years from now. Um, I think that would be awesome. Uh, I love the idea of mixed use in various places. And again, maybe, and I think someone mentioned this earlier, again, if there was just kind of maybe branded, promoted areas that become experiential in their own right, obviously downtown Jack's Beach is entertainment, bars, fun, and other places become more walkable, drinkable, shop, treats, dining, little family friendlier. And, you know, then there's artsier places of your, your South Jack's Beach with Blue Jay listing room and restaurants in the area and other things that could happen there. So um, it, would be, it would be nice to have different areas of town within Jack's Beach to go to for a different experience. Awesome, thank you. Two left, Chase and Angie. Angie, we'll go with you first. Sure, not to be repetitive, but um, I completely agree with, well, one thing I'd like to say is cohesiveness. So I feel like um, coming in and feeling like, I don't know, the appearance and the cohesiveness of the flow of our um, beaches. And I don't even know if, I mean, my articulation is probably falling short. It wasn't a, a language <laughs> or a writing major by any means or stretch of the imagination, but, um, but just, I mean, I know, for instance, I, I'll, I'll quote this. Like, we have a really crappy, ugly, tall sign in our parking lot that people hit, and I do not even understand how they run into it because it's huge. But they do all the time. And people think the cops are being called because we have serve alcohol, and it's not. It's just people hitting a pole. But um, they, it's, it's apparently grandfathered in, you know, that this thing, they can't take it down and they can't repair it because then they can't put it up as high, and then commercial real estate agents don't like that because apparently it's as higher, people see it. Oh, it's just like an exhaustion and, but we just have a crappy pole in our yard now. So, you know, we're not, we're not really looking again for the, I think I'm not even going to use the greater good because that draws me bananas too, but a better, a vision, let's say that. Um, and so, um, especially in speaking to downtown, my father-in-law was in town um, a year ago and, you know, he woke up on, on the morning and we were all headed to work and that kind of thing. And he's visiting and he said, where can I go grab some breakfast and look at the water or go grab some lunch this afternoon and sit on the water? Like we, meh, you're out. You can do West side of third Maple street. You can do, um, I guess you could do deli comb outside. You can kind of smell the water if you sniff really hard, but like that's, you know, those were his options. And, um, it doesn't, it really does become apparent. You know, when you live here, you get in your rut and you get in your thing and you appreciate what you have. And then you sometimes get frustrated, but for the most part, like you have your places and your niches. Right. But when you, are forced to think of it this way when you see someone come from um, across the ditch or across the country, in his, um, in his case, from Seattle, 
it's really eye opening. And I think like to Kate's point, when she has someone fly down from the North, the same thing, it's just very like, people want to come here for this atmosphere. And that is coastal. We have that. We want to be able to showcase that. And we want to be able to showcase it in a way too, that, um, you know, when you're on vacation, a cocktail is a good thing. Of course, when you have three children under the age of seven, cocktail is a great thing. And so you can, you know, you can be anti like this alcohol thing, which is this trend we have going on. Um, and, but I, or this feeling anyway, this vibe when you run up against, um, uh, in my experience and, um, but we need to, we, we need to be realistic about it and embrace that situation where you're dealing with adults. You're dealing with people that are on vacation. And I understand it's a slippery slope. I get it. I, I, last time I saw three in the morning with a tequila shot was a long time, you know, but right now I still enjoy your cocktail in the afternoon and looking at the water. So I feel like that downtown to be vibrant and to give um, our, be proud of our community and what we've built that's 15, 20 years from now. Um, God willing, I would love to have someone come to town and be very prideful that I can walk them through Jack's Beach and not say, you want to go see Atlantic Beach? It's fantastic up north. So um, that, that that's 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 the best way I can articulate how I um, am excited. And I do have um, faith in this group of small business and business owners that we have become because we are a tight knit and very supportive group. Um, in my experience, um, you know, a lot of us that have. Um, uh, are in positions right now that are not able to open because of the current situation and we're still bleeding money. Um, you know, we hope to be here because we are, we are so supportive and we're so um, uh, wanting to see this community grow in a positive manner. So um, uh, thanks for doing this again. Thank you. Um, first time I think in any of these conversations, we've talked about parents needing alcohol, but I concur with you a hundred percent. That's why I have 20 taps. <laughs> Chase, you're last. Let's let's see let's see you bring it home. All right, um, all right. So, with to answer this question, I, I feel like it's it comes in three categories, right? So, uh, you've got a resident, um, you've got a business owner, which we all are, and then you've got a tourist side. So, um, from a resident side, um, I would like to see the zoning be redefined from a resident side. I would love to see. Uh, the RS zoning um, not have the ability for somebody to buy a single lot and throw two blue flexes on it or something like that. Um, I moved out of a house because my area was zoned that way. Um, and I didn't just didn't want two lots and having six different families on those two lots. So I would love to see that. I'd love it to see more single, single family housing rather than multi-use. Um, that's my, that's my resident side. Um, my business side, for me specifically in the mini bar, I have to, I think every time I talk, I would just like to see the accessibility from Mavi, like you were mentioning with David, like would love to see Mavi re retaken, Beach Marina, like I remember when it was Billy's, man, like you know, we'd go get some oyster shooters for sure. But like it was, I would love to see Beach Boulevard widened a little bit to have more pedestrian access. So if we do lines, if we want to step into actual this, you know, the century and do lines and do scooters and do all this kind of stuff and be able to have people drive east to west and be able to park their car and go and not have to worry about getting a DUI or any of that kind of stuff. Um, I'd love to be able to see that. And then from a tourist side, I'd love to see things that we could do. Everybody say it on the water. Like I, I, I like surfer, um, but I don't like the idea that it took deep pockets like surfer to go there and to be successful. Like I, I, I will always go to surfer because it's a sweet, it's a sweet experience. Same thing with salt life. It, you go in there, it's great. But I would love to see small businesses like us be able to have accessibility and to be able to succeed in areas like downtown Jack's Beach. Like I've seen my favorite surf shops closed. I've seen businesses closed. We've all seen bars closed. We've seen restaurants closed right on third, on first street. And, and that's sad. And so you ask the question, why? Was their food terrible? No. Was their drinks terrible? No. Was parking terrible? Yeah, it was pretty terrible. Uh, was accessibility terrible? Yeah, it was pretty terrible. So I would just like to have those answers, uh, those, those questions answered on how that, we can, how that we can try to revitalize it and sustain it, rather than just saying like, oh, I wanna have a rooftop bar. We had rooftop bars, like Costa Marina's there, but like, you know, like the pier was there. You could see the water from the pier. 
So why did they close? Why? So you just kind of start asking those questions of how we can have small businesses go into these little areas and actually succeed and set them up for success, tee them off. And so um, those are my three points of like from a resident standpoint, from a business owner standpoint, and also from a tourist standpoint. So thank you guys. Awesome. You landed the plane. Appreciate it. Um, we are at 651. We're actually nine minutes before our ending time. Um, Dr. Dumont, anything you want to say to the group for participating tonight? Um, sure. Great job, everyone. I was taking my notes. Mike flips pages. I scroll on the iPad. Um, we'll get him there someday into writing on his iPad instead of just tapping and such. Um, I've heard a lot of this before, and I can't say I disagree. I can say that a lot of pushback that businesses have received is because of codes and um, things that we are, this is, this whole purpose here is to figure out where we're trying to be as a city so we can revise a lot of the codes and restrictions that we're facing. Some things are state law, a um, lot of stuff locally though, uh, but we do need to change. We are looking at revising a lot of that. It's going to take some time though. Um, when this part, when this section gets done, we'll start, we'll hopefully develop a vision as the council and then we can start working on the strategic plan. And once we have goals and we know where we're trying to get to, we can then put the proper resources and um, focus on how to best get there. And that's what this whole process is about. Um, I give you all credit, a huge amount of credit for keeping your doors open during this time. Um, I, my heart really does go out for you. Whenever I, uh, for years, whenever I go by an empty storefront, I'm sad and that was somebody's hopes and dreams that it didn't work out for them. Um, and I'm hoping that none of you have to face that and that we get everything going and uh, you will be uh, good to go and chug them right along um, as soon as possible. So um, thank you again for your participation, um, for doing all the hard work that you are doing and um, keeping your businesses open, keeping people employed um, and helping Jack's Beach be a, a, a cool community that we're all happy working, living and playing in. Thank you. And uh, from my perspective, I... I'm sorry, Mike, can I break in one second? And I do have to note that we are heavy on 16th Avenue South in this focus group. I think I am between the two of you. I'm in the 500 block and I know you're to the left of me and you're probably to the right of me. So yeah, we're, we're heavily focused on 16th Avenue South here. Nothing wrong with that. Um, I want to thank all of you for, for participating in this tonight as well. Um, you know, there's, there's nothing better than having conversations with the community to find out what your desires are for where we want to go so that we can make sure we actually take the community in the right direction. Um, the, the goal at this point, time permitting, is to start discussing the vision process with the, with the uh, City Council next Monday at Council Briefing. Uh, we will only have about an hour and 20 minutes and we have a, a laundry list of topics to talk with Council about. So hopefully we're able to at least start the conversation with them about the results of all of these community conversations. We did six with residents and two with business groups. So uh, we got quite a bit of information uh, from the community at large. Um, but I think it's safe to say that what you all talked about here tonight, there was substantial overlap with what we've heard with the other groups. And that's a good thing because that means that there's a consensus in the community about what some of the things are that you wanna see and where you want that community to be 10, 15, 20 years from now. And I think that will uh, really help us in terms of setting our priorities and establishing a, a long-term mark that we're gonna try to hit. So uh, again, thank you all for participating in this event. If you get a chance to tune into the council briefing next Monday, that's going to be the, the first conversation with council about the results. And uh, we may call on you again at any point in the future to, uh, to provide us some input and some feedback as to how we're doing. Uh, and likewise, our government is open to you. We don't, we're not here unless, unless you support us. So if there's anything that you ever need, please feel free to pick up the phone and uh, call City Hall and, and let us know what we can do to assist. So thank you all. We finished up five minutes early. Go have a good rest of the evening 